Now that we've gotten comfortable with working with the t distribution and making a confidence interval for a mean, we're ready to do a hypothesis test for a mean. So the question we're going to answer is, how do we conduct a hypothesis test for a mean? And the process of a hypothesis test is always the same, whether we're talking about one proportion or two proportions, or in this case, one mean. The only difference is we have a few different formulas for the mean to help us calculate that important test statistic that will help create the p-value. First off, for the mean, the distribution Because we don't know the population standard deviation, the distribution of the mean is a t distribution with a subscript for the degrees of freedom, one less than the sample size. The way the standard error is calculated, the standard error is equal to the standard deviation of the sample divided by the square root of n. And then we'll use that standard error to calculate our test statistic. And our test statistic is going to be t equal to the difference between the mean of the sample and the hypothesized mean divided by the standard error. So these are the three pieces that will help us find the p-value to conduct our hypothesis test. Now, because the t-distribution has a slightly different number based on the degrees of freedom, we need a slightly better way than just looking up a value on a table to calculate the p-value in our t's. The way we're going to do that is we're going to use our calculator. First, we have to set up the test. And the way we set up the test is you're going to hit the Stat button. Then you will scroll over to Tests. Then you will scroll down to the T test. Once you set it up, you have to enter the stats from your study. Now, the calculator has an option of entering the data or entering the stats. We're going to enter the stats. So if needed, select stats. So the calculator knows you're going to actually enter in the stats. And the stats you're going to enter in, first it'll ask for mu sub 0. That is the null hypothesis. It's also going to ask you for x bar, which is the sample mean. It's also going to ask you for what they call SX, which is the sample standard deviation. Then it'll ask you for N, which is the sample size. We know that one. And finally, it'll ask for mu which is the symbol in the alternate hypothesis, whether that's less than, greater than, or a not equal to. 
I'll show you how this process looks on the calculator, but it really helps to have an example. So let's do that. Let's build an example. It is claimed the average page in a novel has 275 words per page. To test this claim, you sample 24 pages of a novel. And you find the average page has 260 words. With a standard deviation, of 34 words. Do you believe the claim is true if alpha equals 0 0.05? Well, we start off every hypothesis test with a null hypothesis. Here we're talking about a population mean. And the claim is that the mean is 275 words per page. For the alternative hypothesis, we're not really saying it's less than or greater than. You just want to know, is the claim true? So what we say is mu is not equal to 275. And because we have that not equal, we're really dealing with a two-tailed test. Where we've got our normal distribution. The hypothesized mean of 275 is in the middle. But it actually turned out to be 260, which is less than it. But because this is a two-tailed test, we're going to shade both sides. Those are our x values. We're going to calculate t values off of the distribution. The mean is distributed as a t distribution because we don't know the standard deviation of the population. But we do know the degrees of freedom is 1 less than the sample size. So the degrees of freedom is 20. Three. Let's go to our calculator then to calculate the t value and the p value. Again, that keystroke that we're going to do is first you're going to hit the stat button, which is right next to the arrow. Then we'll scroll over to test. Then we'll scroll down to the t test. We are going to input the actual statistics, not the individual data values. So we'll highlight statistics. Mu sub 0 is the null hypothesis at 275. x bar is the sample mean. Our sample was 260. Sx is the standard deviation of the sample, which was 34. And n, the sample size, was 24. We're going to make sure we highlight the alternate hypothesis symbol not equal to and scroll down to calculate. When we do, you'll see the calculator gives us several things. But what we're interested in most is t and p. t, the test statistic, is negative 2.16. 
and p, the probability the null hypothesis is true, given our sample, is 0 0.0413. So let's record that our test statistic is t equals negative 2.16. We can add that to our picture to the left of 0. And the p-value is 0 0.0413. And what that p-value means then, that's the probability the null hypothesis is true. So based on our sample, the probability The average page in a novel having 275 words, that probability is 4.13%. And remember, we said alpha was 5%. 5% is the minimum probability where we will still believe the null hypothesis is true. 4% is less than that, so we can no longer believe the null hypothesis is true. So we will make a decision to reject the null hypothesis. And the reason for that decision is that the p-value is less than the alpha. The p-value is 0 0.0413, which is less than the alpha of 0 0.05. That is too little probability. There is overwhelming evidence to reject the null hypothesis. And so we make our conclusion. Following our script, we say that there is sufficient evidence to conclude. And then we state the alternative hypothesis in context. The alternative hypothesis was just not equal to or different than. So there is sufficient evidence to conclude the average number of words per page in a novel is not, or maybe we should say is different. and then 475 words. Let's actually take this one step further and build a confidence interval for where we believe the actual mean number of words lies. Let's build a confidence interval. And let's just do a 95% confidence interval. Now, we know the distribution that we're dealing with. We know the degrees of freedom off of that are one less than the sample size. The degrees of freedom we said was 23, because the sample size is 24 pages. So our degrees of freedom is 23. Alpha. The percent of chance that we're going to be wrong is 0.05, the opposite of the 95%. So alpha over 2 is 0.025. So we're looking for a t sub 0.025 that has 23 degrees of freedom in our table. Looking at our table then, we want 23 degrees of freedom. 
we want 0.025 and a tail. And so that tells us that the critical value we're using this time is 2.069. So t sub 0.025 is 2.069. We're ready to calculate the error that might exist between our sample mean and the actual population mean. Remember, the error is t sub 0.025 times the standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So 2.069 times the standard deviation. We said the standard deviation was 34 words, divided by the square root of the sample size, which was 24. We end up with an error of about 14.4 words. So for our confidence interval, we will subtract and add that error to the mean we got in our sample. Our sample mean was 260. We'll subtract the 14.4 to get a low number. We'll add the 14.4 to get a high number. And so our confidence interval is 245.6 through 274.4. And you notice the hypothesized mean of 275 is outside of that confidence interval which is related to why we ended up rejecting the null hypothesis. Let's go ahead and interpret it. We can estimate with 95% confidence the population, and we're talking about a mean, and put it in context, number of words per page in a novel is between 245.6 and 274.4 words. And now we have our confidence interval. So hypothesis testing with a mean, it should feel very similar to hypothesis testing with a proportion, because the process of a hypothesis test is identical regardless of what we're studying. The means are nice because we can use the calculator to make things a little bit shorter and quicker for us. But the philosophy behind the hypothesis test is still exactly the same. So try and take a look at a few of those. We'll look forward to trying a few of these in class and answer any questions that you might have. We'll see you then.